it's still really windy and my battery is about to run out and Jeremy's coming. So I've got to be quick, but there's so much to say about Momo. So, um, oh, <laughs> Jeremy's going to kill me, I think. Uh, Leave me alone. Yeah, Momo, you tell them. Um, <laughs> so anyway, Momo was not a part of uh, the original troop or the babies that were born here. Um, we actually had someone arrive with her when she was teeny, 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 tiny. She weighed 97 grams when she got here. She was extremely malnourished, very dehydrated, had lost most of her fur. Um, they had bought her as a pet um, and she wasn't eating and they'd tried taking her to the vet and they'd tried different things and it just wasn't working. And honestly, by the time that she got here, she was, um, ah. yeah, she was uh, in pretty, pretty bad shape. And we truthfully did not think that she was gonna make it through the day let alone the week. But we agreed to do what we could for her. And we got her to eat and we got her to start gaining weight. And now we were presented with a huge problem because lemurs that are hand raised by people almost always become aggressive, very aggressive. Aggressive to people aggressive to other lemurs. And like I said earlier, earlier lemurs need other lemurs. They are very, very social. They learn from each other, just like humans learn from each other. And we did not want this little lemur to grow up by herself. So we were presented with the issue of how do we introduce her to our existing lemurs? Because they are very tightly knit family groups and it is almost unheard of at least to the with the people that we spoke to and we spoke to a lot of people and a lot of people that are experts on lemurs it is almost unheard of for an existing family group to adopt an outside member <coughs> Jeremy so, but we had to give it a try. We really had to give it a try. And a gentleman that I spoke to that had been working with lemurs for 40 or 50 years, <laughs> he was the only one that had even a glimmer of hope. But he told me, you know, you're gonna be approaching this like a science experiment. <laughs> because there is no tried and true method to make this work, that maybe you'll figure out something <laughs> that does work. And so we started bringing Momo down here to meet the other lemurs. Um, we held her and we watched how the other lemurs responded to her. We showed her to the other group um, and we showed her to this group. The other group largely was uninterested. Um, <laughs> if not, a tad bit aggressive. This group though was very curious and particularly Rita. And there's Rita over there. Sitting on the left, that's Rita. Rita had had the twins, Jaker and Roscoe. And she was super, excuse me ma'am, she was super mom. She was an excellent mother. And when she saw Momo, she wanted that baby bad. She wanted us to give her that baby so that she could take care of it. So we kept that up for a while, just keep coming down here for longer periods of time. And then we took Rita and moved her up to the sunroom. The sunroom is where uh, Momo was that was her nursery. So she was in there 
being taken care of. We moved Rita up there and introduced the two and it was uh, painstaking and terrifying and beautiful. Um, it was terrifying because at any moment Rita could have killed her. Um, there's only so much that we could protect her until it was time to find out if Rita was going to accept her or not. And this truly was the best chance of Momo having any quality of life. Rita adopted her completely. And then we let them bond for a while. And then we brought Mort and Miss Stewart up. And they accepted Momo too. There were uh, many tears of joy during those introductions. So then we let the whole family bond for a couple days inside while we kept a close eye on them. One of the things that we were most concerned about was Momo eating because of course Rita was not um, lactating. May I help you? Um, and Momo was so little and so weak that um, she had a difficult time eating on her own. So we wanted to make sure that she could eat on her own before bringing her back out with the rest of the group. But eventually she was after, this is the amazing part, after watching them for a couple of days, she started eating on her own just by watching them. So we felt she was strong enough. She had bonded enough with the group. It was time for her to come out here. And out here is where she's been ever since with her family, with her adopted family. Uh, yeah. But she's nutty. She is hyper. She's definitely different. <laughs> she's definitely different than the others. She has a different, um, different behaviors, different mentality, and a lot of that, again, is from being raised by people. <laughs> but we could not be any happier to have Momo here because she brings so much laughter and joy to our lives, and she is really a miracle baby. Truly, her story is, without a doubt, one of the most amazing things that has ever happened to Care, especially after so many people told us that there was no chance. So again, we have the full story on our YouTube channel and on our website. If you are curious to know more, you can even watch the introductions. We filmed it. Uh, they're very tense, but also, like I mentioned, very beautiful, really beautiful moments. Right, Momo? Momo! Moo! Ah! Yeah! Ah! <laughs> This is our very last cat, our very last animal. And this handsome fella that is literally turning his back to me. <laughs> Isn't that appropriate? This is Lakai, Lakai the mountain lion. And I'll tell you why that's so appropriate. We have an adoptive uh, adoption and sponsorship program here. So windy. And it allows you to uh, symbolically adopt or sponsor an animal, which means basically you donate every month towards their care. And Lakai here is my adopted kid no respect no respect <laughs> I'm grateful so ungrateful all right so look I moved to his little 
platform here. And he's having a major grooming session. <laughs> so hopefully he'll stay put for a little bit. Uh, and there's just no good angle right here to get him. And he just refuses to look at me. So thanks for the help, buddy. But anyway, so let's talk about Lakai. Um, Lakai actually came here with another mountain lion, a mountain lion named Apollo. Apollo was just giant, very big boy, much bigger than Lakai here. And Lakai is not small. Um, they came to us from the Dallas Zoo. The uh, zoo had a set of enclosures called Cat Row where they had um, three sets of indigenous species, uh, cougars, bobcats, and I believe ocelots. And these enclosures had been originally built in the 20s or 30s and just weren't up to zoo standards anymore, to the Dallas Zoo standards. And so they wanted to um, get rid of those enclosures and retire the animals that lived in them. So they looked at a lot of different facilities and eventually asked us if we would be open to taking in Apollo and Lakai. And um, we were happy to do so. We raised about $50,000 and built uh, a very nice enclosure that has tons of ramps and platforms. It's got this middle section um, where we can come and hang out. It's got all kinds of stuff, a pool. It's got a top section above here where they can go. They can go underneath. Um, they have some housing underneath. Um, it's pretty, pretty cool enclosure for them. Um, but we got them a couple years ago. And since then, um, not too long ago, within the last year, uh, Apollo suddenly passed away. And it was very unexpected. Um, we had not seen any signs that something was wrong, but uh, he had very sudden um, catastrophic heart failure. He was fine one night and the next morning he was gone. And it was a shock and very difficult and very saddening. And uh, we know that their former caretakers at the zoo were very, very um, heartbroken. We were heartbroken and we were really worried about Lakai because the two were very close. They had both been born in the wild, actually, and they're one of the two of the few cats here that actually were born in the wild. The only other cats here uh, that are not captive born are the bobcats, Max, Mia, and Bobby. And they were, Apollo and Lakai were both born in Canada, in different parts of Canada. Both of them had been orphaned. And if you can see right here, when, oh, he just moved. When Lakai was found, when he was a baby, he had uh, lost part of his ear, his right ear to frostbite. But they were both orphaned. I believe they were both found when they were under three months old or around three months old. Uh, they were both taken in by facilities in Canada, rescues. And then um, when they were still under a year old, I believe they were transferred to the Dallas Zoo and they spent the next seven years at the Dallas Zoo. Um, been here a couple of years now. Um, Again, we were really afraid for Lakai uh, losing Apollo because they'd been together for so long since they were so young. Apollo seemed to rely on Lakai more than Lakai relied on Apollo, though. Um, Apollo, even though he was bigger, he was the bigger scaredy cat as well, just a little bit more nervous, more shy. Uh, spooked a little easier than Lakai. Um, so maybe that worked in Lakai's favor that he was already a little bit more independent, um, than Apollo was. But, uh, when they first got here, they were, of course, scared when they first got here. They didn't know where they were, 
but um, they were cuddled up together and took care of each other for the first couple days. We started noticing um, in the morning there would be uh, footprints all over their enclosure, so we knew that they were getting up and going out and exploring. And pretty quickly, I mean, in a matter of a couple weeks, they seemed right at home. But he's got massive front paws. And teeny back paws in comparison. But he's, he's pretty awesome. He's gorgeous. And he's a pretty chill guy. He is nothing like Cassie. You know, Cassie, who needs everybody's attention at all times <laughs> and has never met somebody that she doesn't like. He's not like that. He's a lot more reserved. He's not, um, certainly not as needy as she is. Uh, again, enjoys his alone time. But, you know, he enjoys visitors, too, from time to time. He'll let us know if he's in the mood or not. He'll give us a nice hiss if... Uh, it is uh, not visitor time. Otherwise, I mean, he can get really friendly too. He'll come up to the fence and rub and be all cute. He's He can be really playful. But um, he's a cool guy. That's, that's it, guys. That wraps it up. Just kidding, that wasn't it. One last stop. <laughs> I got several complaints on the segment that we did with Ezra that we didn't get the full Ezra experience because he was eating a bone. And would I please show him again? Ez, Ez, Ez. <laughs> is a good boy. Ez! Ezzy! <laughs> Alright, so this really is it. This is the end. No more. This is all. We're leaving. We're going. We're not doing any more. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Make sure you uh, follow us on social so you can stay up to date on everything that's going on here at CARE. And we hope that this lifted your spirits and that you learned something new. And please take care of yourself and take care of others. And hopefully when we reopen, you can come out and visit and see the cats for yourself. All right. Bye, guys.